Did you know that Dark Cloud had a brief tie-in promotion with the skateboard company Vans? Did you know about Dark Cloud's removed playable character Seda still left in the game files? How about Dark Cloud's cut online mode? Join me as we delve deep and discuss some never before seen Dark Cloud facts and secrets with the Dark Cloud Iceberg. <laughs> Hey there, and welcome to the Compendium. My name's Hidden Castle, and I'll be your guide, and this is the Dark Cloud Iceberg. Now I can hear some of you say, Hidden Castle, isn't this iceberg format done to death? And you're right on that. It is done to death. It's history, even. But I think there's value in history. In fact, these iceberg images could be a very effective way to help spread obscure information throughout the Dark Cloud community. That's why I took it upon myself for the past year and a half to culminate all sorts of obscure facts and trivia. Japanese magazines, interviews, never before seen facts, you name it, this list got it. Now, for those who don't know, an iceberg image, essentially, the lower you go, the more obscure facts you can find. So let's play a game. If you learned something new in this video, feel free to leave a like. If you didn't learn anything new at all, and I doubt it, leave a dislike guilt-free. With that being said, let's isolate ourselves within the dark cloud iceberg. Let's watch. Before I begin, I want to give a quick shout out to my patrons on patreon.com slash hidden castle. I'm very grateful. Thank you for helping fund the compendium videos. The best thing about this Patreon is that no video content is being paywalled. If you'd like to support this channel's creation of DC videos, feel free to check out that link in the description below. Once again, that's patreon.com slash hidden castle. Thank you very much. Level 5 refers to the company which created and developed Dark Cloud and Dark Chronicle. The company was founded in October 1998 through receiving funding from Sony Computer Entertainment with the purposes of creating a next generation RPG that can showcase the power of the upcoming PlayStation 2 system. The company's name bears some symbolism as the 5 in Level 5 stands for 5 Star Software. In a 2018 interview, it was revealed that Level 5 was initially founded to be a subsidiary of Sony. Essentially, what this would mean is that they'd make games exclusively for Sony consoles. However, this changed over time, as they now have a healthy relationship with both Nintendo and Sony, as well as self-publishing their own titles in Japan. Akihiro Hino is a creator of Dark Cloud and the founder of Level 5, and its sole president for over 20 years. Growing up, he was inspired by games like Dragon Quest and Wizardry. These games would later go on to influence his creative work at Level 5. He began his career in video games working at River Hillsoft, creating games for the ill-fated Panasonic 3DO. He would later go on to leave that company in pursuit of creating his dream game, that game was Dark Cloud. Georama RPG refers to the game's titular creation mechanic. Level 5 and Sony advertise Dark Cloud as a unique, groundbreaking RPG, one that prioritizes user creation. This new kind of gameplay was dubbed by Sony in Level 5 as the Georama RPG. The title of Georama RPG was even shown off on the game's early beta logo, in addition to the title screen of the Japanese version. Interestingly, Dark Cloud wasn't really the first RPG to have creation mechanics as Actraiser, Soulblazer, and Legend of Mana all featured a user creation system, but none showcased them as predominantly or proudly as Dark Cloud, the Georama RPG. 
Zelda Killer refers to the infamous cover of PlayStation Magazine number 40 from December 2000. This magazine had Dark Cloud featured on the cover with the title of Dark Cloud. Zelda Killer. This art has become rather iconic in the Dark Cloud community and was even created by award-winning comic artist Mike Wieringo, also known as Ringo. He created two other Dark Cloud pieces, but PlayStation Magazine decided to use the iconic piece that we all know and love today. Throughout his artistic career, Mark worked on several titles such as Spider-Man, The Flash, and even The Fantastic Four. Sadly, Mike passed away in 2007. He now has an art award named in his honor and inspired many. Tokyo Game Show 1999, or TGS 1999, is the venue where Dark Cloud made its worldwide premiere, along with the hotly anticipated PlayStation 2. It's significant because Dark Cloud appeared to be very different at this point in time, as Tone sported an alternate design and the world map had its own share of differences. The promotional movie disc was released to Japanese retailers and shows off an earlier build of the game, notably a different HUD featuring the shield, unused items, take a look. Dark Cloud was home to some notorious spelling errors, from monsters like the Skeleton Soldier being referred to as the Skeleton Soldier, or NPCs like Little Gina being mistakenly named as Xena, not to be confused with that warrior princess. Areas like Muscalaka being mistranslated to Muscaraca, to even more outrageous errors like with Pike. This is a short list. There's plenty of notorious spelling errors in Dark Cloud. Many players experience Dark Cloud for the first time through its various playable demos. These range from Japan's Taikanban demo to the PAL Territory's Black Cover demo disc, which featured Dark Cloud as one of its games, to the mail order Dark Cloud Yellow demo disc of North America. These demos are often limited to one hour of playtime, but there are players out there that are just fast enough to beat the time limit. As a reward, you're able to view some pretty unfinished, cursed-looking cutscenes. Dark Clouds Press Disc the Dark Cloud Press Disc was a piece of promotional material that was given away to gaming journalists and publications. It included a set of promotional screenshots and a write-up which gave information about Dark Cloud's plot prior to its release. What's interesting about this press disc was it included rare 3D renders, in addition to the early write-up of Dark Cloud's plot expanding the game's lore, notably mentioning that the villagers who were trapped in Atla were actually dead. For those interested, I did do a deep dive video discussing the Dark Cloud press disc as well as Dark Chronicles. Feel free to check that out. RNG everywhere. When thinking about RNG in Dark Cloud, one's thoughts would quickly go to the item drop system. However, it goes much deeper than that. The character-specific upgrade items seen in Dark Cloud, such as a fluffy donut, fish candy, and so on, also rely on an RNG system. The base defense increase for all these items is plus 5. However, the game adds a random amount from 0 to 2, depending on the player's cursor movement, the flapping duster. The Flapping Duster is an item that the player could utilize to travel to the back floors of Dark Heaven Castle through the means of a flying carpet. The reason for the Flapping Duster being unaccessible in the international releases of Dark Cloud is due to the drop rate being 0% through a mistake made by the developers. This means that the item absolutely cannot be obtained through regular means in the game, as the game always has its drop rate at 0%. But, you can access the Flapping Duster through utilizing the item debug glitch. Sadly, Level 5 and Sony never addressed the Flapping Duster issue with any of Dark Cloud's re-releases or greatest hits. However, there is a fan patch out there that fixed the item's drop rate, making it finally accessible to the dedicated fans who wish to go the extra mile. The Broken Dagger Glitch 
The broken dagger glitch refers to a popular exploit that players use to receive a massive stat boost. Dark Cloud Curious Code Crawler Word of Wind took the time to explain why this phenomena occurs. This is a super simplified explanation, but the glitch is caused by the memory values and how the game calculates the inventory slot positions of both the player's inventory system and the shop's inventory. If the player is quick enough when scrolling through the shop menu, they'd be able to grab items that are otherwise unseen, which results in the broken dagger. Now this glitched item that is grabbed has a large amount of data, which results in the increased stat boost, as all of that data gets distributed to all of the weapon's stat values. Alternate Character Names Throughout Dark Cloud's development, the game's cast of characters went through a variety of name differences, and this can be seen when viewing the game's files. Notably, the main character Tone was called Toran, Goro was Toro, Ungaga was Ungara, and Seda has two separate names. First, the code refers to him as Side. However, in the Dark Cloud promotional trading card game, he's referred to as Sheeta. And don't you worry, we'll get to that promotional trading card game soon enough. Dark Cloud's Japanese Battle System the Japanese battle system varied widely from the one that we all experienced in the international release, as the JP battle system was much more sluggish in comparison, as Tone lacked his 3-hit combo, and characters like Goro and Undaga have their attack animations slowed down in addition to the weapon upgrade system lacking any build-up section, making upgrading and evolving weapons a shot in the dark. This was improved for the international release, as the Japanese version of Dark Cloud met some harsh criticisms, however these changes made the international release a much more engaging and better experience for the player. Real-time weather when Dark Cloud was being developed, it was intended to be a technical showpiece for the upcoming PlayStation 2. The game utilized many groundbreaking graphical techniques, such as water wave patterns, heat haze, advanced cloth physics, as well as dynamic shadows and lighting. However, the game was intended to feature a real-time weather system. This can be seen advertised on the back of the game box, as it states, real-time weather and day-slash-time system. As the time of day changes, everything in the environment changes, including interaction with NPCs, environmental elements, and other significant events. It's speculated that this feature was cut either due to time restraints or system limitations, although both a dungeon and village day and night system and weather system were implemented in the sequel, Dark Cloud 2 Dark Chronicle. Operation Atla Operation Atla was the first notable fan movement in the Dark Cloud community. They were active in the early 2010s and were absolute trailblazers when it came to giving Dark Cloud an online presence and fanbase. The aim of this group was to prove to Level 5 and Sony that there was indeed an active fanbase for these games and that we'd love to play a new installment in the Dark Cloud series. The Compendium is a YouTube channel founded in 2019 that focuses on documenting the beta changes that the Dark Cloud games went through throughout their development, in addition to spotlighting the most obscure information about our favorite Georama RPGs. This channel was created by Hidden Castle to help keep the series relevant and the Dark Cloud community engaged. Alternate cover art. During the localization process for Dark Cloud's international release, Sony and Level 5 created a few different early versions of the final international cover art. In fact, there was two early versions, let's discuss them. The two earlier versions of this international cover art was actually used when marketing Dark Cloud. The first image on screen is the earliest version of the international cover art. As we can see, Tone's facial features such as his mouth, eye brows and eyes all look very different and much more simplistic and less detailed to the final cover art that we're all used to seeing. Initially, this early version of the cover art was only available online in low quality JPEGs, which certainly didn't do this early version of Dark Cloud's cover art any favors. However, in 2019, this early version of the cover art was actually found as a high quality PNG file on a promotional Tokyo Game Show 2000 press disc that was being sold online. 
I'm glad they were able to have a better look at this interesting piece of Dark Cloud history. And that's not all, as there was a trailer made in 2000 in order to drum up excitement prior to Dark Cloud's release. But within this trailer, it actually shows off another early version of the international cover art. Notably, Tone's smile is different from the final cover art that we all know and love. It's good to know that it took level 5 a couple of tries to settle on perfection. Rando's Shell Ring in an earlier stage of development, Rando's Shell Ring was once a key item and even intended to be obtained by the player during the Queen's section of the game, before this plot element and the item were ultimately removed. However, this ring can still be found in the game through Dark Cloud's item debug menu, as well as mentioned in Dark Cloud's official strategy guide. The fact that it's mentioned within the guide and even still makes an appearance within Dark Cloud's item debug menu perhaps hints that this item was removed fairly late within development. The plot implications of how Tone would have initially obtained this ring is currently unknown. The Star Festival the Star Festival is the name of the titular celebration that takes place at the start of Dark Cloud. Notably, the name of the celebration can be learned through Paige's dialogue options, although many players are not aware of the name of this festival due to it only being mentioned in NPC dialogue, and players tend to skip NPC dialogue. I love how there's a lot of subtle world building within Dark Cloud found only buried within NPC dialogue. It's worth a read, that's for sure. The 1999 Magic Carpet Ride The 1999 Magic Carpet Ride refers to a segment in Dark Cloud's worldwide reveal at Tokyo Game Show 1999. This Magic Carpet Ride was prominently shown off during the event as well as Tone having a different design altogether. Yes friends, this was Dark Cloud at its earliest phase. Very interesting to see. This magic carpet would have allowed Tone to travel to different areas in the game, notably to the floating continent, which the player would have been responsible for bringing this floating landmass back to the Earth. In an IGN interview published in September 1999, they confirmed that this magic carpet would have been used to travel back and forth from Tone's island floating in the sky to nearby villages, and that the player would have been able to trade information with villagers and gain allies on his quest. I think that's really interesting, being able to trade information with villagers. Perhaps that was a mechanic that was planned to be in Dark Cloud, but scrapped later on down the line. Interestingly, Level 5 was questioned in the year 2000 on why the magic carpet was removed from Dark Cloud, especially after it was prominently shown, along with all the other differences that took place between 1999 and 2000. Dark Cloud's producer, Kentaro Motomura, stated, quote, Due to the lack of time, some functions and characteristics of Dark Cloud have been abandoned, such as Tone moving in a flying carpet, the ability to jump, some zooms, dynamic flights, and the possibilities of building volcanoes. In addition, the design of Tone has been reviewed since the demonstration of September 1999. Don't forget that the first demo was a technical demo for the PlayStation 2, and Level 5 therefore wanted to display a maximum potential in order to push the PlayStation 2 to its limits." End quote. However, there is a small reference to the magic carpet in the Japanese version of Dark Cloud, as the back floor item for Dark Heaven Castle, the flapping duster, allows the player to ride on a magic carpet into an ominous painting. What makes this even more tragic was that this reference was unable to be seen by international players, as the flapping duster was not accessible in those versions of the game. What can you say? It's a shame all around. Japanese Lasaya Fight Lasaya was a boss that gave a lot of players trouble when they first encountered her. However, did you know that this boss fight was even more challenging in the Japanese version of the game? In fact, Lasaya is the only boss in Dark Cloud to have different behavior in the Japanese version. Notably, the Japanese Lasaya is surrounded by a shield of ice arrows, and she utilizes these ice arrows as a projectile attack against the player. Unlike the North American or even European release, she's lacking any magical shield. But rather, in the Japanese version, players can damage her by breaking through her ice arrows, which leads to the Ice Queen being vulnerable to damage. 1999 Beta Map 
The Tokyo Game Show 1999 version of Dark Cloud is filled to the brim with differences, and the world map is no exception. When the map was showed off, it illustrated a very different world for Tone and his friends to explore. What's interesting is that the little details in the map were actually animated, such as the clouds around the floating continent, the water waves of the seaside town, and even the smokestacks of the desert village. In comparison, the maps seen in Dark Cloud or even the sequel, Dark Cloud 2 Dark Chronicle, feature no animation at all. Ruby's Beta Lamp Ruby's Beta Lamp is yet another removed item from the Queen section of the game. It initially would have been used to summon Ruby from her lamp. Despite being unused in the final version of the game, this item could still be found in the item debug menu. And it even features a different 3D model, which appears to be much more simplistic in comparison to Ruby's lamp, which is featured in the cutscenes. Between Ruby's beta lamp being obtainable by the player and the shell ring, it seems like many story elements within Queens were reworked at some point in time. Pretty interesting. Beta Atla Animation Throughout Dark Cloud's development, many little quality of life changes took place, but one that many players are not aware of is the original animation for obtaining Atla. This animation was actually seen in Dark Cloud's promotional movie disc, and is notably different from the one seen in the final version of the game. In fact, it's even longer in comparison. Now this would have been annoying when collecting multiple Atla in one floor. The beta animation is 7 seconds long, whereas the final animation is a breezy 4 seconds long. Take a look. Couscous and Mardan Garyan's Friendship The Mardan Garyan family of fish are the most rare and sought after fish in all of Dark Cloud, so it's a surprise to learn that Matataki villager Couscous is actually friends with this legendary fish. This could be gleamed through his NPC dialogue. Quote, I have a fish buddy called Mardan Garyan. We met in the falls when I was still little. Mardan Garyan likes strange food. It won't eat bugs that other fish would eat. It eats strange stuff. Stuff that's not so healthy. End quote. Once again, I love how Dark Cloud has tons of obscure information and connections between characters hidden deep within the NPC dialogue. Japanese Nostalgia Marketing the commercial for any product is important for selling a potential customer on the idea of purchasing that item, and video games are no different. The Japanese commercial for Dark Cloud is notable as it's much more introspective and filled with a sense of melancholy. This 30 second commercial focuses on a young adult wandering through his old neighborhood, the one where he grew up in, as he's reminiscing on all the areas that were significant to him during the pivotal years of childhood, and despite the fact that they're gone, he can use Giorama and Dark Cloud to bring back the one place that means the most to him, his childhood home. Take a look. <laughs> やきゅうやったひろば。いやいや通った塾。大好きだった高井ちゃんち。怖い犬がいた家。初めて自転車に乗れた公園。取り戻したい故郷がダーククラウド。プレイステーション 2 Lagoon Empire and Flag Gilgister Colonel Flag Gilgister is a side antagonist in Dark Cloud and the leader of the Eastern Military Force, the Lagoon Empire, and he's absolutely determined to destroy the West Continent. In order to build up anticipation prior to Dark Cloud's release, several press write-ups would often spotlight the characters. They'd even go as far as spotlighting and mentioning Flag Gilgister despite his meager appearances within the game's story. He he even got two trading cards, in fact one's a holographic. But hold on, we'll get to those Dark Cloud trading cards in due time. Removed Online Functionality 
During Dark Cloud's development, the team experimented with having an online mode where players could collaborate with one another. During Dark Cloud's development, the team experimented with having an online mode and even upload their world. This was revealed to be in the plans as early as a Tokyo Game Show demo of 1999. In fact, during the event Comdex 1999, PlayStation spokesperson Phil Harrison demonstrated this very early version of Dark Cloud and even briefly discussed the online capabilities of the title. Take a look. And uh, you can see here that once again everything being created in real time. This is not a movie. Now this world allows you to create not only the environment that you explore, but the characters that you, you meet as well. And ultimately in a broadband world, the people that you meet will be real. Principal Skinner in Dark Cloud. Principal Skinner from the hit American cartoon The Simpsons and from Steamed Ham's fame makes a surprise Easter egg appearance within Dark Cloud. This well hidden Easter egg could be found in Queens, specifically in Basker's shop, as a newspaper could be found with the headline reading Inside Seymour Skinner's Legendary Bachelor Bungalow. The joke with this reference is that Seymour Skinner is known for being anything but a a legendary bachelor. In reality, he's a mama's boy. It seems that a cheeky developer at level 5 was a fan of The Simpsons and included this well-hidden easter egg. Hidden. No more. Skull in Witch Parfait there's yet another oddity within Dark Cloud which relates to Ruby. Once the player gains access to the world's most powerful genie, the player is able to obtain Witch Parfait, which increases Ruby's defense. However, unbeknownst to the player is that if one uses the free camera within the item debug mode and rotates the Witch Parfait, you can make the startling discovery that the cream is actually a skull. The same skull used for the skeleton key found in the Divine Beast Cave. So, I'll pass the question off to you. Is this a developer being resourceful and reusing models to save time, or is Ruby using the skulls of the fallen to increase her own power in some dark magic ritual? You be the judge. Sound off in the comments below. To be honest, I think it's just a dev trying to save time. <laughs> Giorama in non-Dark Cloud games. What put the Dark Cloud series on the map and even differentiated it from other Japanese RPGs was its use of the titular Giorama system. Dark Cloud was the first game to utilize Giorama technology, but did you know that it was later used in other level 5 titles? This creative system was reused for Dark Chronicle, which was rebranded as Dark Cloud 2 in the West, but I'm sure you all knew that. In addition, Giorama was later reused in a limited capacity with Rogue Galaxy's factory system, which was very reminiscent to Giorama. With that being said, players got the chance to experience Giorama in high definition for the first time in White Knight Chronicles for the PlayStation 3, and then later on with Nino Kuni on the PlayStation 4 and PC, which had a very similar Kingdom creation mode. When it comes to Giorama, it seems that Level 5 knew a good idea when they saw it. Rondo City Within Dark Cloud, there are several cities and villages for the player to discover. However, some are only discussed by NPCs in the game. They're only mentioned by name, and they're often missed by players as they're buried under tons of NPC dialogue or within item descriptions. Perhaps these areas were intended to be a part of the game at one point in time before being removed. It's important to note that there are several areas within the Tokyo Game Show world map that don't appear anywhere within the final map. Let's touch on these unused areas. Rondo City is an area that's mentioned by name by Basker when he gives you the ointment leaf. He states that this leaf originated from Rondo City, a bustling cityscape where they use this leaf to create beauty products. Apache Village In keeping with the theme of mysterious, unseen villages, Apache Village is mentioned by name by Steve the Slingshot. This village bears significance to the Slingshot as this village is where he grew up and where he calls home. He describes this village as being very hot in addition, it seems that the chief of this village was not very fond of our talking slingshot friend. It's important to remember this village, as it'll play a role in another topic coming on the iceberg. Flame Dungeon 
there is concrete evidence within Dark Cloud's files that there is at least one unused dungeon that was meant to be explored by Tone and his allies. When using the item debug menu, you can find several items that Tone could obtain throughout his adventure, and even some items that are unattainable, some beta items. Within these beta items are some mysterious dungeon key items. These items are labeled as Flame Key and Flame Dungeon Key. Now perhaps these Flame Keys could relate to Apache Village, the village where Steve comes from, where he mentions this village as being very hot it seems to line up. It's worth noting that Dark Cloud 2, Dark Chronicle also featured a flame dungeon and a flame village. So there's a strong possibility that Level 5 later reworked this cut village into the game's sequel. And that brings us to our next point. Unused Flame Village Throughout Dark Cloud's development, several changes took place, many of which we discussed within this iceberg, such as the unused flame dungeon, along with its unused beta dungeon items that could still be found left over in the game, the flame key and the flame dungeon key. In addition, there is likely a flame village to go along with that dungeon, and there are several hints within the game that suggest this. Let's discuss them. Now we're already familiar with Apache Village, the village where Steve calls home, as Steve names it directly and says that it has a very hot climate, and we know that there is unused flame dungeon items. So there's a strong possibility that this unused flame area was called Apache Village. In addition, when viewing the world map prior to visiting Yellow Drops, you can see a large vacant area shaded red above Norun Village. And now this color scheme matches the unused flame dungeon keys, which also matches the description of Apache Village as being a very hot village. It all comes together. This area is later covered by the moon and left unused. Now it's important to mention that Steve can be obtained as early as Divine Beast Cave in Norun. Judging by this unused area on the map and Norun Village, it seems that these two villages would have been neighboring villages. So it makes sense to find Steve, a native of Apache Village, within the neighboring village of Norun, as the distance between the two is quite small. And that's not all, as when looking at early 3D renders of Norun village, you can see that the area is surrounded by jagged mountains, which would again fit the flame aesthetic of a fire dungeon and of a flame village. And when taking into consideration that there is an unused area right above Norun village, which is shaded red, which matches the flame dungeon and matches the description of Ap Apache Village. It all illustrates that Apache Village was once the Flame Village. It should be noted that there are several unused Jirama items, such as volcanoes, that can be found in the game's files, but unused in the final version of the game. Now everything I mention is evidence provided within the game. It becomes clear that there was indeed an unused flame dungeon along with the flame village. And through using Steve's dialogue, we can tell that this area would have been called Apache Village. And when looking at the unused area within the map, knowing that it's red and right above Norun village, it matches a description of what Apache village would have been. It's all really interesting to think about, to imagine how this village would have been within Dark Cloud 1. Again, it's important to note that this idea of a flame village and flame dungeon were later repurposed for Dark Cloud 2 Dark Chronicle. Pierre and Armand when exploring the Divine Beast Cave, one of the first NPCs a player can discover trapped in Atla are Macho and Camacho. Many have grown attached to these two muscle brothers, but unbeknownst to them, Macho and Camacho is not really their birth names. Rather, these are nicknames. As later on in the game, we discover a distant relative of the brothers through Chief Wilder, who says that he has family living in Norun Village, as he hands you the Macho Sword, solidifying the familial bond between these three family members. However, when speaking to Chief Wilder after you complete the story events of Queens, he tells you that he remembers his family members' names. It's Pierre and Armand. It's really cool to see that Macho and Camacho have canon names within Dark Cloud. Pierre and Armand. Macho and Camacho. Beta Battle System 
One aspect of Dark Cloud's gameplay that remains divisive to this day is the game's use of duels, which are essentially rhythm-based minigames that are required for passing certain story events in the game. However, did you know that in a much earlier build of Dark Cloud, the player would have once been able to trigger duels whenever they pleased against any monster. These duels would have been triggered through the use of this golden sphere icon that's located above in the HUD. This icon is unused in the final version of the game, and the duel any monster functionality was ultimately scrapped. Early Giorama Menus the Giorama system really helped Dark Cloud stand out among its contemporaries on the PlayStation 2, especially during the PlayStation 2's worldwide reveal, as the feature was praised by critics. It would only make sense that the Giorama system and its menus went through a few revisions. The first and earliest revision of the Giorama menu was showed off at Tokyo Game Show 1999, and it featured a much more robust Giorama menu in comparison to what we see in the final version of the game, with whole features being removed, such as Giorama sections dedicated to placing different terrains, rolling hills, and towering landscapes. Sections for environmental objects such as volcanoes and trees, sections for brick houses, and two unknown sections, but the final section is the most interesting, as it would have gave you the option of saving a village, loading a village's building placement, or even uploading your village online for others to play. Now this would have been a groundbreaking feature had it shipped with the final version of the game. And this brings us to the second version of the Giorama menu, which is much more simplistic, perhaps even more simplistic to what we see in the final version of the game. This Giorama menu was created when the team at level 5 were told to scale back the scope of the Giorama system by their publisher Sony. As such, it's much more simple looking than what we saw in the Tokyo Game Show demo, or even even what we have in the final version of the game. Ultimately, I'm glad that we got the Giorama that we have in the final version of the game, but I wouldn't be lying when I say that. I honestly look at the Tokyo Game Show's Giorama, and I just think of the infinite possibilities, the creativity of the players, and what we could have done with this more robust, amazing Giorama system. One can only imagine. Debug Dungeon Names Hidden away in Dark Cloud's debug menu is the internal names for the dungeons that Tone and his allies explore. Some of these dungeon names differ from what we're used to seeing. They are as follows. Cave of the Sacred Beast Forest of the Own Sunken Ship Shrine of the Sun and Moon Moon Ocean Dark Heaven Castle and the Daemon Shaft. What's interesting about this early spelling of the Demon Shaft is that Daemon refers to how the ancient Greeks understood demons as being creatures in between humanity and the gods. Now this can even relate to the Demon Shaft's overall design structure as you can see several Greek columns and spires all over the Demon Shaft. Unused Village Icons they say that artists are often perfectionists, and the artists who created Dark Cloud are no different. Several art assets, specifically village title cards, were changed from what we see in the final version of the game. These title cards are as follows. No Rune Village Norn Village Cave of the Sacred Beast Village of Matatagi Forest of the Owl Queens Sunken Ship Muscaraca Shrine of a Sun and a Moon, Yellow Drop, Moon Ocean, and Castle of the Dark Heaven, Onyx Thundercloud. One of the greatest things about Dark Cloud is all the amazing weapons that the player can obtain. Whether it be that talking magical slingshot Steve, or the greatest weapon in the game, the Frozen Tuna. One curiosity hiding within Dark Cloud is mention of an unused weapon by the name of the Onyx Thundercloud. It's described as being a sacred sword of legend. Now, unfortunately, we haven't found any 3D model for the sword. However, if we ever do, you know that the compendium will be the first place to hear about it. Beta Chronicle Sword Design Dark Cloud players are no stranger when it comes to surprise. 
whether it be catching a Mardan Garian completely by accident, or being surprised with an item from the Happy Clown. But imagine finding a deleted weapon completely by accident. What a surprise indeed. When playing through Word of Wind's chest randomizer mod, Cuboid Pixel accidentally discovered a beta design for the Chronicle Sword. When they obtained this rare item, it just reverted back to the regular version of the sword. What's interesting is that the 2D icons for the Beta Chronicle and Chronicle 2 can be found hidden in the game's data, showing that these beta designs for the Chronicle Sword and Chronicle 2 were changed fairly late in development, as they have completed icons and 3D models that were ultimately changed in the final version of the game. Dark Cloud Trading Cards Now for one reason or another, Dark Cloud didn't get the merchandise like other Sony first party titles. I mean, Legend of Dragoon got some amazing figures, and so did Omega Boost. However, when discussing Dark Cloud's merchandise and promo material, what most fans are not aware of was that prior to Dark Cloud's American release, Sony Computer Entertainment of America did a very limited print run of Dark Cloud trading cards. The reason the reason why you never heard of these cards, aside from being a very limited print run, is that they were only obtainable through a mail order service from Sony. Notably, they came in a large fold-out diorama display which included and showcased all the cards as well as the yellow demo disc of Dark Cloud. Now these trading cards have become quite the rarity. You'd have to spend a lot of Gilda to obtain the complete set of these cards online, but the true rarity is finding all these trading cards cards uncut in their original diorama form. There are several notable tidbits and trivia that can only be found in these trading cards, such as the Spirit King specifically being the defender of the western continent, Goro being referred to as a Matagigan hunter, not Matataki, Ruby being referred to as a sorceress rather than a genie, Xiao's weapon being pachinko balls, these pachinko balls can be found unused in the final version of the game. It's odd seeing these unused items being referenced in official media. Seda being called Sheeta, and Paige's weapon being her good looks. Steve's twin sister. Steve is one of the most interesting side characters within the Dark Cloud series. Believe it or not, this wisecracking little slingshot actually had family once upon a time, most notably a twin sister. As Steve says, quote, I have a twin sister who I've been separated from for a long time. I wonder how she's doing. My name's Steve, by the way. My sister's name is Stephanie. Everyone thought that my sister and I got along well. When I take a close look at you, Xiao, you look like my sister. Better music in trade show demos. Dark Cloud was shown off in several video game press events with the hopes of spreading the word of this new ambitious video game from Sony and the fledgling studio Level 5. However, what's curious about these early builds of Dark Cloud that are shown off within trade shows is that the background music played within the game is of a much higher quality than that heard in the final version of the game. Notably, Dark Cloud's final in-game soundtrack is MIDI-based and uses audio samples, whereas the music played in the game during trade shows is of a much higher quality using actual instruments. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison. Take a listen. What's interesting is that these better sounding musical tracks were later reused for the Dark Cloud official soundtrack. It's unknown why Level 5 chose to have this better soundtrack playing within trade shows, but not in the final version of the game. I really do wonder why they replaced this better sounding music for basic MIDI compositions. Perhaps it was an issue with disk space, but who knows.
Dark Cloud's removed playable character, Seda. It's clear that Dark Cloud went through countless changes throughout its development cycle as Level 5 was working around the clock to create the greatest game they could for their publisher. Their relation with Sony was not always cordial, as a publisher ultimately demanded the game meet a certain date for its Japanese release, and this led to some of the ambitious aspects of Dark Cloud being reworked or cut entirely, with some removed elements still remaining in the game's code, such as the flame dungeon keys we discussed prior, or even a removed playable character, and that character was Seda. For those interested, I dedicated an entire compendium video on the discovery of Dark Cloud's deleted playable character, Seda, and it's definitely worth watching, but here's a Cliff Notes version. In 2018, I was able to interview some Level 5 staff who wished to remain anonymous, and I asked them some in-depth questions about Dark Cloud's development. One of my sources noted that Seda was removed from the game when it was about halfway complete because his gameplay would have been more ambitious than the other playable characters. As such, he wasn't able to be completed in time. They went on to note that a majority of the work done for playable Seda was conceptual and on paper. However, an idea that was discussed by the developers was to give Seda a unique playstyle, one that would allow him to utilize both spells and swordplay. Now these spells would have benefited the player, such as casting buffs like speed and stamina, or debuffing the enemies such as freezing or poisoning the monsters. Here's a video clip from Tokyo Game Show 2000 where we can see playable Seda utilizing some sort of barrier spell. However, Sony wanted Level 5 to finish Dark Cloud's development as soon as possible in order to meet the Japanese launch of the PlayStation 2. That meant that an ambitious playable character who had a complicated playstyle such as Seda had to be removed. The team at Level 5 opted to replace him with a more simple character that can be completed within the time allotted by Sony, and that character ended up being Osmond a character who had less weapons and animations to create, along with a much more simple playstyle. This was mandated by Sony as they wanted Dark Cloud's development to be more streamlined and focused to ensure that Dark Cloud met the Japanese launch of the PlayStation 2. Taking all this into consideration, it seems that Seda would have played similarly to Monica from Dark Cloud 2, only with a twist. Level 5 even went as far as to create a character portrait for playable Seda, which sadly went unused. In 2020, with the help of the Dark Cloud community, we actually discovered remnants of playable Seda left in the game's files, specifically noted in the file C07A. Now the C stands for character, character number 7. This was an amazing discovery and it shows that even after 20 years there's still many secrets left in Dark Cloud waiting to be uncovered. As well as how much work was done for playable Seda, he does have an earlier model and an early broadsword. Very cool indeed. Dark Cloud's Costume Cameos Dark Cloud was one of those series that was a blink and you'll miss it. Some might even say that the Dark Cloud series was a moment in time that was unforgettable. But those who didn't forget was the staff working on Everybody's Golf for the PlayStation 4. As in 2018, Everybody's Golf actually crossed over with Level 5 for the company's 20th anniversary celebration, allowing players to take control of Level 5 characters within the golfing game. Among these characters were Tone and Chow. This is very significant as it's the first time that Dark Cloud crossed over with another video game. More importantly, it gave the Dark Cloud community our first look on how characters like Tone and Xiao would have looked in high definition in 2018. Honestly, I wish they did the rest of the Dark Cloud cast along with Max and Monica. That would have been so cool to see. Dark Cloud My Journey Promo Item Dark Cloud's My Journey booklet is a very rare promotional item that was listed onto eBay. The origin of this booklet is unknown, however the seller did come from Los Angeles, so perhaps this was an E3 promotional item as the video game trade show E3 is held in that city. 
What's interesting about this booklet is that there's even some space for the reader to write and take notes about their Dark Cloud journey. In addition, all the accompanied text was written in a journal form in first person by the main character Tone. This is really interesting as we're given the chance to read Tone's thoughts for the first time and even learn more about Tone as a character. This is something we experience very little of in Dark Cloud as he's a silent protagonist. With that being said, here's some Dark Cloud My Journey Iceberg Facts. Number 1. The booklet refers to the Spirit King as the Spirit Emperor. Number 2. The dungeons are referred to as the Underworld and monsters as fearsome demons. Number 3. This booklet confirms that Xiao used to visit Tone's house even before her transformation. I think these lore tidbits and world building is really cool. Number 4. The text states that it was the Spirit Emperor who transformed Xiao into a warrior and Tone's ally, rather than Seda giving Tone the change potion. And number 5. Ruby is once again referred to as a sorceress rather than a genie, much like her description in the Dark Cloud trading cards. Van's Warp Tour 2001 Now I know what you're all thinking. Dark Cloud and Vans? The shoe company? What? Now give me some time. This will make sense, I promise. For those who don't know, Vans is an American shoe company known for creating skateboarding shoes and merchandise. Their popularity in the 2000s was second to none within the skateboarding scene, and this led to the shoe company going across country promoting their latest products on their Vans Warp Tour. Specifically, during Vans Warp Tour 2001, the shoe company partnered with the American American retailer Target, where they produced a promotional PS2 disc. Now what's interesting about this PS2 disc is it had several PS2 games portrayed as van skateboards, and among these video game themed boards was one based on Dark Cloud. Very random, but very cool all the same. Mysterious Removed Monster this unused lizard dragon enemy was found only in the Japanese version of Dark Cloud within its files. The complete animations for this enemy have yet to be found or are deleted entirely. All we're left with is this walk cycle. This monster's model could be found among the enemies for Norun Village. It's unknown what this enemy was planned to do or where it could be found, although this monster could have originated from the scrapped fire dungeon. But that's only speculation. Yellow Drops is deleted NPC, Gizmo. We're gonna discuss quite possibly the loneliest NPC in Dark Cloud. Now we know this because they're not even in the final game. When Word of Wind was working on the community's Dark Cloud Enhanced ROM hack, they found mention of an unused NPC name in Yellow Drops, which means that there was initially one more Moon Bunny for Tone to interact with, and that character was named Gizmo. Sadly, Gizmo doesn't have any dialogue. It seems like the only mention of this character left in the game is the fact that his name shows up in the NPC list for Yellow Drops, and they don't have any dialogue. This makes me wonder, what kind of character would Gizmo be? Was there any art created for this character? And so on. Alas, we'll never know. Rest easy, little Gizmo. We hardly knew you. Ruby's Beta Character Portrait it seems like Ruby and Queens are constantly being brought up during this iceberg. When exploring through Dark Cloud's files, on the retail version of the game, you can find some unused character portraits left over. Notably, an earlier portrait of Ruby showcasing a previous design. As you can see, her skin color was much darker, and she even has a gemstone placed along her forehead and some pretty fancy earrings. Now, seeing this really makes me wish that Dark Cloud would have got some sort of an art book showcasing showcasing early concepts and character designs. How cool would that be? Removed Weapon Attachments When going through the game's files, an unused weapon attachment can be found. It appears to be an insect buster, or anti-insect, as it prominently showcases a bee. This implies that there was once a weapon stat focusing on insect enemies. This even had a 3D icon and everything. In addition, within the game's text files, there's text that describes two unused weapon stats that were not seen in the final version of the game. Sadly, they have no accompanying icons and are only referenced in text. These stats would have been used to improve the player's luck and growth for their weapons. They are as follows. Growth plus one plus two, and plus three. Now the description for this growth stat is, quote, obtain greater experience by attaching to a weapon, 
end quote, along with luck plus one, plus two, and plus three, which states that it increases luck by attaching to a weapon. Xiao's unused pachinko mechanic. Within the game's files, there exist several equipable pachinko ball attachments for Xiao to use in battle. These are unused in the final version of the game. What's interesting about these unused pachinko is that they're actually referred to as nuts. Perhaps the localizers working on the international version of Dark Cloud wanted to rename the pachinko balls as nuts, as the global audience is not really aware of what pachinko is. There is a petite nut, which the game describes as being a bullet for the slingshot with very little power. The slime nut, which would have had a chance of inflicting the goo status ailment on enemies. The bomb nut, which explodes on contact, as well as a very basic looking acorn nut. Unused Georama Pieces if one thing is clear within this deep dive iceberg, it's that level 5 initially intended for Dark Cloud's Georama system to be much more robust than what we ended up getting in the final version of the game. Sadly, many Georama items were removed from the game. However, some exist within the game's code, and believe it or not, they're actually functional. Specifically, within No Rune Village, there exists a Cactus Georama environmental item which would have been used to decorate the village. This even has a 2D icon within the game's files. In addition, there's even an unused type of road which would have been placed in front of houses. It's unknown why these Georama elements were removed as they appear to be functional in the game, albeit with cheat devices. One can only imagine. Unused Karakoin. There was unused character dialogue discovered which hints at an unused way of how the player would have obtained new playable allies. As in some point in development, the developers planned for the allies to join your party, they'd offer Tone an item called a Karakoin, which the player would have been able to use to summon the ally within the dungeon. Although this text was removed from the final version of the game and this mechanic scrapped, the Kara coin functionality is still present and can be seen in the game when the player presses the select button to quickly swap between characters. Dran's Horn Dran's Horn is an unused item which would have been used by the player as a key item. Its description states, quote, Dran's Horn lets you ride on Dran to another map. Now this item would have enabled the player to travel to different areas in the game, similar to how the world map was used in the final version of the game. Thematically, this is interesting, as it's yet another instance of sound and music being able to control beasts within the Dark Cloud universe. As within the first Dark Cloud, the strange sounds of the odd flute can be used to summon the killer snake, and in its sequel, Dark Cloud 2 Dark Chronicle, the Shigura are manipulated and controlled by Dr. Jamming's music. This item is interesting as it implies a transitional sequence taking place from one area to the other, perhaps a cutscene of some sort. Now I can't imagine why they would have changed the game's travel from one area to the other, and instead making a basic map function. Perhaps it was too difficult to animate and time consuming as Dark Cloud was developed under time constraints by Sony. For those keeping track at home, that's two scrap modes of travel, one by Flying Carpet, and two by Divine Beast. Playable Characters Within Villages during Tokyo Game Show 2000, a build of Dark Cloud was unveiled to the public, which showcased a game mechanic that went unused in the final version of the game. And that game mechanic would have allowed the user to switch playable allies during the Village Overworld segments, as we can see the player controlling Undaga and running through Norun Village. This is exciting as it would have been possible to have unique dialogue opportunities depending on the character you are playing and which NPC you are speaking to. Perhaps this was cut as it takes a lot of time to create custom NPC dialogue tailored to each playable character. The story attached to the floating continent. The Tokyo Game Show 1999 build of Dark Cloud was not only the earliest build of Dark Cloud shown to the public in playable form, but among all of its differences, it even had an alternate story. Notably, in the earliest incarnation of Dark Cloud, the Dark Genie decided to only destroy Tone's village rather than destroying many, like how he did in the final version of the game. An IGN article written by Douglas Perry describes this early version of the story, and it reads as follows, quote, 
Dark Cloud stars a young and innocent but adventurous boy who must return this strange floating piece of land back to its original place. Presumably on the earth, or at least, a place that looks like that. With one exception, his task isn't that difficult. He knows how to land his giant hovering island, but removing the evil kingdom that's uprooted and replaced his future village is much more challenging than it may seem. Traveling back and forth from his island in the sky to nearby villages, the young central character trades information and gains allies on his quest. End quote. It seems that this early version of the story would have been much more personal between Tone and the Dark Genie, as it seems that the rest of the world was unaffected. This would have been interesting to see, as there is an early incarnation of Dark Heaven Castle being described as the evil kingdom which uprooted his village, so perhaps we would have been introduced to the Dark Heaven Castle at the very beginning of the game as well. Dark Urn 3D Renders there are several promotional 3D renders of Tone and the Allies storming the Dark Urn, as there's three different renders which actually depict the same scene. Now with how often the scene was being displayed within promotional imaging, with level 5 going as far as to create three different versions of the same scene, perhaps this scene would have been featured within the game's story, as it seems strange that level 5 would have made three separate promotional renders for a scene that's not even even in the final version of the game, as the Dark Urn was relegated only to the opening of Dark Cloud and never to be seen again, and the characters never got to explore this area. Dark Cloud 2's weapon upgrade system being used in Dark Cloud International. Dark Chronicles Japanese development was bizarre to say the least, as it coincided with the translation process of Dark Cloud 1's international release. As both were being worked on simultaneously, throughout Dark Chronicles early development, level 5 thought of a way to improve the combat, as Dark Cloud 1's Japanese combat system was negatively received. Once they settled upon this improved combat system for Dark Chronicle, level 5 even went as far as to implement this new battle system into Dark Cloud 1's international release, and it was none other than Dark Cloud's creator and level 5 founder Akihiro Hino who made this implementation possible. This information was made privy to the public in a 2018 Siliconera interview with Hino-san. Quote, However, when developing Dark Cloud 2, I was able to get a sword growth hierarchy chart, so I got it and put it into the overseas version of Dark Cloud. I just can't help but fix things when they're right in front of me. End quote. Interestingly, within this interview, he even refers to the international version of Dark Cloud 1 as being Dark Cloud 1.5, which is really cool to hear, and makes sense as Dark Cloud's international release featured many quality of life changes that were introduced within Dark Chronicle, such as the weapon upgrade system. River Hillsoft Level 5 Connection It goes without saying, Dark Cloud is a special game that could not have been made by any other developer. It was truly a labor of love by the Level 5 team and Akihiro Hino. However, when taking a closer look at the team members who helped develop and create Dark Cloud, one can make a surprising discovery, as out of the 18 developers who worked on Dark Cloud at Level 5, 9 of them were previously colleagues who worked together at a previous studio by the name of River Hillsoft. For those who are counting, that's over half of the development staff. This ranges from key players such as main programmer Kenji Masu, composer Tomohito Nishihura, and character animator Yoshiaki Kusuda, but this connection goes even deeper when you learn that once upon a time, Level 5's president and Dark Cloud creator Akihiro Hino worked as a director at River Hillsoft. It all comes together. When Hino is contemplating leaving River Hillsoft in order to create his own game studio, he reached out to Sony. 
Quote, River Hill Soft was a big company and it had to be profitable. I wanted to do something creative, something new, and I thought in order to do so, I would have to be independent. When I was originally thinking of leaving River Hill Soft, I got in touch with Sony and told them what my ambition was to create this new game and I asked them for their support. Sony told me that if I built my own studio and positioned it as a satellite of Sony, they'd give me the support. It appears that when creating this new team, Hino reached out to his past colleagues at River Hillsaw, who he worked well with in the past, in order to join his new company to create his passion project, Dark Cloud. Hidden Debug Mode Found in Jam Pack Demo Disc A wise man once said that the best surprises come where you least expect them. And this perfectly describes the way in which the Dark Cloud community found this never-before-seen Dark Cloud debug disc in the most unlikely spot. The digital archaeology that took place was led by Punk7890. In late 2019, Punk was observing the files of jam-packed demo discs. For those who don't know, demo discs were a popular method used by developers and publishers in the late 90s and 2000s to promote their upcoming video games. Sometimes one disc can contain multiple different games, and that was the case with Jam Pack's demo disc. When Punk was looking through the files of Winter Jam Pack 2002, he made a startling discovery. Essentially, when looking through PlayStation 2 files, the game file itself is called .elf. And when going through this demo disc, Punk found an unused .elf file. When making this unusable .elf file bootable, it surprisingly turned out to be a debug build of Dark Cloud, left over on the demo disc. Now it's interesting, as Dark Cloud was not mentioned anywhere on the demo disc at all, neither in the packaging or in the in-game material, so it really is a mystery how this debug build found its way in the Jam Pack demo disc. Alternate music in debug mode. Dark Cloud's soundtrack has become iconic in the hearts of players ranging from the powerful ballads to the more somber tunes. It really is difficult to imagine this incredible soundtrack being any different at all. However, I already discussed how Level 5 experimented with using an enhanced version of the soundtrack only for it to go unused, but little did fans know is that it goes even deeper than this, as Level 5 left several unused music musical remixes of the dungeon themes left over in the game files. Now there's about 12 of these musical remixes and they can be heard and feature different renditions of some of our favorite musical tracks. Let's take a listen.
Steve was once human. Dark Cloud is a game that's full of secrets just waiting to be discovered. However, some of these secrets are best left forgotten. Steve is a character that's no stranger to mystery, whether it be his home village of Apache or his family, such as his twin sister Stephanie. It goes without saying that Steve was once human, and there's evidence proving so in various different spots in the game. However, one thing does remain a mystery, and that's how Steve, a human being, transformed into a slingshot. Moonflower Palace, Tokyo Game Show Beta Connection When Dark Cloud was initially showed off at Tokyo Game Show, it surprised the world with its true-to-life graphics and user customization. Level 5 created an in-game environment called the Floating Continent, in which the original antagonist ripped this landmass from the Earth and replaced it with their Dark Castle. The original objective of the game was to put back this floating continent where it belongs. However, this unique environment only appeared in this early demo of Dark Cloud and was never seen again. Interestingly, Level 5 revisited this concept in Dark Chronicle, as the main antagonist used this exact same tactic against Max and Monica, showing that Level 5 repurposed some of the ideas and concepts that were cut from Dark Cloud into Dark Chronicle. In addition, international players of Dark Cloud 1 were able to experience the Demon Shaft which is a post-game dungeon that shares a strong resemblance to the Floating Continent. However, the Floating Continent was much larger and featured Jirama, whereas the Demon Shaft did not. Shao is a character that's no stranger to the deep, dark waters of the Dark Cloud Iceberg. The next few facts will relate to our favorite slingshot-wielding warrior. Shao's Hidden Transformation Hidden away deep within Dark Cloud's files lies a secret transformation for Shao. If the player searches through Dark Cloud's scene debug mode, they can find Shao's Hidden Transformation. Let's take a look. As we can see, Tone is a stand-in for Shao's model in this case. This is clearly an early version of Shao's dungeon obstacle, showing that Level 5 initially planned for Shao to have the ability to transform from a cat back to a girl freely, and this transformation is evidence of this, along with Shao's beta character description, which reads as follows. Quote, Xiao, a young girl magically transformed from a cat to a human being. She has the ability to transform back into a cat. End quote. Now it's pretty interesting as she even has two different character portraits, one as a cat and the other as a girl. So perhaps level 5 initially intended for these two character portraits to be used when she's a cat or a girl. It all makes sense when you put it together. And this deleted transformation scene, hidden no more. Xiao's Mysterious Locked Doors In addition to Xiao's hidden transformation, players can experience a very rare phenomenon in which these strange symbols appear when playing as Xiao. It appears that this was an additional dungeon mechanic that level 5 were testing for Xiao that was left unused in the game code. This would explain why Xiao has a first person view mode that can be used in the dungeon, as this point of view was initially going to be used by the player to solve these puzzles, as the player would have been responsible for knocking down the targets. Ghosts resemble moon people. I think every Dark Cloud player has that one monster that used to scare them. Recently, many players have begun to draw comparisons between the ghosts that are found in dungeons and the moon people. Perhaps these ghosts were once moon people that stumbled into the dungeon only to be defeated by monsters and were later resurrected by the Dark Genie for their magical abilities. What do you think about this? I gotta say, they do look similar. Similar. Tone's three different character designs. Japanese magazines can have some pretty interesting information regarding game development that sadly gets lost to the sands of time, either due to the scarcity of print media or due to language barriers. In the Japanese magazine Dengeki, there was an issue that focused on Dark Cloud and the game development process, and they even interviewed Dark Cloud's director and creator Akihiro Hino. Interestingly, within this interview, he states that 
that there is three different designs for Tone. The Tokyo Game Show design, the final design, and one in the middle that we never got to see. Quote, Hino. In these kind of games, you have to create dynamics between the characters, so we struggled a lot with having a silent protagonist. We had to use our initiative to make him express all sorts of different things, all without speaking, so I have quite a lot of affection for the protagonist. Interviewer, so the more effort that you put into the character, the cuter they are, you know. I think so. Actually, there was about three different designs for Tone. Interviewer, really? Was it his face? Hino. His face, body, everything. We came up with the first protagonist, and then another one, and then the tone that you see now. I think that he's got the best design because we were working so hard on him. Well, of course we made this design the final one because we liked him. End quote. This is very interesting as Hino specifically states that these are three different designs for tone, and it's not just like his face or little differences, his face, body, everything was different. We can say that the first protagonist was a Tokyo Game Show design, and the final design is the one that's seen in the game, so perhaps this middle design serves almost as a missing link between the two. Very interesting. Kara01 References Within Dark Cloud's files is references to the playable characters. For example, Tone would be Kara01. However, hidden deep within the code is the game referencing Kara01. Test. Now we all know that Kara01 is Tone, so perhaps Kara01, Test, is the original model that Tone was using for Tokyo Game Show 1999. Sadly, all that's left of this ancient file is other files referencing it, meaning that there's no real way to bring back this original file or even open it up in a 3D model viewer. Mysterious Japanese English build of Dark Cloud. Studying Dark Cloud's development can honestly be a little confusing, as there's so many builds out there. In addition to the fact that the international versions of Dark Cloud were being created all the while the initial Japanese version was being completed. This was done to save time with the hopes of hitting a worldwide release. However, due to the strange worldwide development cycle, there exists a rare build of Dark Cloud that includes elements of the Japanese version combined with the English version's localization, a combination build if you will. This is evident in PlayStation Magazine DVD Volume 25 from the UK, where you can see a very unique build of the game being spotlighted, showcasing a beta HUD, in addition to chest sounds and animations being different along with the dialogue box. However, the biggest difference is that the Japanese battle system is present, something that will be removed for a far better battle battle systems seen in the international versions. Take a look. One of the first RPGs. Very, 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 very different to the Final Fantasy game, but still, yeah. still very good in its own right. It's kind of another one of the games which, uh, RPGs, which tries to do something different and does it well. The whole kind of uh, building the world outside of uh, the actual normal adventuring thing is, is very clever, where you have to find, find the bits of your village and basically kind of rebuild it uh, to the specifications of who lives there. Yeah, it was. I mean, that was the, the big thing with it, wasn't it? That bit's actually it's quite interesting. It's a shame that these bits, I most of the game is a bit open the chest. Get the yeah, the, the dungeon sections are are a bit repetitive, but you know, it's yeah. got a good combat. It's got a clever system of you know, kind of weapon systems. Well, it's, it's all real time. Yeah. Yeah. Rather than Final Fantasy's menu systems. Yeah. And then you get these bits, which are actually Bomani bits as well, so it's yeah. got, got a lot of variation in it. And all the different characters have got different skills that you need to, to solve different bits. It's, it's very cool. Next, DC announcement. When Level 5 completed the development of Dark Chronicles' initial Japanese release, many fans don't realize that they immediately began development of Dark Cloud 3, and even announced it through Dark Chronicles' official Japanese art book. However, this version of Dark Cloud 3 gradually evolved into what we now know as Rogue Galaxy. Let's read through this announcement together. Message for Dark Fans. 
It's already been half a year since Dark Chronicle was released for sale. Up until now, we received a lot of responses from the players. Trial and error is an essential part of game creation, but with Dark Chronicle, I think we've been able to provide an answer to both the wishes of the user and our own line of thinking. This is a hasty message, but Sony Computer Entertainment and Level 5 are planning a new release. This might be a sequel to Dark Chronicle, or a successor, or it might become an entirely new work. I can't tell you anything official yet, but I believe that not long from now, the time will come when we will proudly be able to say that this is the next world that Level 5 has created. Until that time, please keep supporting us. Level 5, Akihiro Hino. In addition, this main character who is shown off in the next Dark Cloud announcement in silhouette form was found in full color in Rogue Galaxy's strategy guide, showing that he was an early concept for Rogue Galaxy's protagonist, Jaster Rogue. And that concludes the compendium's Dark Cloud Iceberg. I hope you learned something new. If you'd like to support videos such as this, feel free to visit the compendium Patreon page, which is linked in the description below to have your name at the end of the video credits. Many thanks to my compendium chroniclers, Ronin395, Ryan7, Waposa, Trashcats, Anna, and Storylover. Thank you very much. Now, our Moon C Mega supporters typically write a message to the community, but today's video is a little different. I wanted to write each of them a haiku to show my appreciation. Ryan7, Ryan of Stardew, Fishing Expert, and Kind Soul. Words are not enough. Ronin395, Ronin the Loyal, your passion knows no bounds. The world is yours. Many thanks to my amazing Compendium patrons. Thank you for visiting the Compendium. My name's Hidden Castle, and I hope you have a great day. Take care.